Welcome everyone to another episode of the College Express podcast. As always, it's Kara here with Mackenzie. Uh, Tyler had to take a step back from the podcast for a while, so filling in for him will now be Katie. Hi. <laughs> I'm a junior web developer here at CX, and I do the web design and work on the website and help Tyler with whatever he needs. Great. Glad to have you on board, Katie. And of course, we have a guest, and this time it is... Hi, uh, I'm Ethan. I'm a digital marketing specialist over on the other side of the office. Sweet. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, this month's podcast is going to be all about internships, uh, how to get internships, how to get full-time jobs from internships, what internships are like. So we're going to get right into it. But first, let's explain the podcast uh breakdown how we send it out the first week of every month on the first four days of that week we are going to put out one question per day uh, and then on the fourth day we put up the entire video so you can watch the whole thing and enjoy all of us wonderful people all right so our first question this week is if you hope to later be hired by the company should you make this known from the outset um, this is from at cv.consultants from instagram that is a really good question. Um, I actually ended up getting hired for a job through an internship uh, from high school. Uh, I had been interning with this company for uh, three years and they knew I was interested in doing it. Um, I didn't you know, immediately say when I first started, hey, I wanna do this, but um, I did make it clear at sort of the end of my internship, because like I said, it was three summers. I made it very clear that last summer I said, I would like to stay on after um, after the internship is over this year. So what steps can I take uh, to get this position? And at the end, I, I went to them and I said, I'm still interested in joining this um, sort of full-time on a seasonal basis because I still have to go to college. So what what steps can I take now? Can I audition? Can, can I interview? Audition. Yeah, so it was for <laughs> it was for a tour guide position on the Freedom Trail, which I still do on the weekends. Oh. I'm sure you guys know. You yeah. guys now know. Um, so it was. You did the three summers before getting the shindig. I did. Wow. Yeah, I didn't do the same thing. I like now I give tours of Boston, uh, but at that time it was data management grunt work where they had me write things mm -hmm. out. But I have my name as a um, contributor to an app. Ooh. So, that's cool. Grunt work can be fun and give you cool titles. <laughs> that was a good idea to talk about working with the company at mm -hmm. the end of your internship because, yeah. again, like internships are like the like learning experience, and like mm -hmm. some people go into it not knowing if this is the right field for them. Yeah. So maybe like when you go in for an interview for the internship, yeah. don't outright say like I want to be hired here yeah. after because you really don't. Yeah, and yeah. also they have no reason to even like entertain the thought because they're like, yeah. we don't know who you are, we don't yeah. know what you can do. Yeah. Uh, like, all right, like you're that communicates, I think, mostly like a kind of like aggressiveness that I think most managers would be like, okay, pump, pump the brakes. Yeah, it's kind of like you're you're assuming that you're going to end up getting this position. Yeah, uh, when it's not, it does happen a lot um, where companies will hire interns that they have, but it's not an automatic go. Um, so what I did was I constant, I didn't constantly pump them, but I made it very clear that I was interested. Um, my second summer I said, hey, you know, do you ever hire interns from here? And they said, well, we hired one a few years back. And they said, if you're really interested is you can talk to the guides because as an intern, basically what we we're doing was crowd control. So we still dressed up, I have dresses and a costume. Um, we still dressed up in costume, but we were sort of around the edges, you know, making sure that people who didn't pay for the tours didn't tag along. We just, you know, made, made it very clear, you know, like, oh, this is a paid tour. Like, you're welcome to give us money, but you do have to pay for it. Got a lot of, oh, this Green Trail isn't so free. Um, good one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very original. Uh, and so we got basically management sort of things like that. Uh, but they said, you know, talk to the guy, maybe they'll let you do a spot here and there. So I got to practice doing the job um, because I was in the office so so much I got to ask them you know what do you not like to hear at the auditions because you had to do a spot on the trail and you had to pretend that you were giving a tour like what do you not like to hear about They're like we're, we've already heard too many Boston comments we don't do that we're, it'll upset us how do I do this job better so that's even if you're not asking 
if you can get a job after the internship, do ask questions about how to do whatever job you're interested in. Totally. Better. Yeah. I think that's like a great thing you can be doing towards the end of an internship. Like mm -hmm. if just like even if you're not trying to get a job from them, just to get a, a like get that last like ounce of learning out yeah. of them, like go to them and be like, hey, like you know, as I'm exiting here, like can you pass on any last bits of wisdom of like how I would get a job? And if you can be super cool and then like mm -hmm. turn that around, awesome. But also, if they're hiring for a position that you're interested in, submit a, an application. You'll you know you can even talk to the hiring manager. Uh, if you're in the same department and just discuss with them like, oh, you know, what are you looking for from an applicant in this position uh, and things like that. Uh, just to sort of get a better grounding of it. You can also, it makes it easier if you're interviewing to explain how you're already an asset to the company rather than trying to convince them that you will be an asset. And going back to the question, um, it also might be helpful if during your internship you like try and get a feel for what it's like to work there and ask people different sort of questions about like the environment or what they do or um, interns in the past and stuff like that might be helpful to know then if you do want to be hired by the end of it. Yeah, I know sometimes when you do an internship some people will kind of be doing one job but they'll be working with someone else and then they kind of realize that that's the job they're more interested in. You can also ask like, hey, just wondering if you have any internships also available in that and maybe next time you can work in that department and like build off of the relationship with them that way. But also like another thing that might happen is the company may want to hire you after the internship and you might not be interested. Yep. Right. Um, That'd be way more awkward if you, yeah, right. <laughs> if you like express interest yeah, when you yeah. got there and then at the end you're like, uh, oh, never mind. Like, yeah. cool. right. So you don't want to burn any bridges with that either yeah. by saying like, no, I'm not interested in your company. I would just like say, I think I'm going to take some time to yeah. like figure out what my next steps are and then maybe email them or go back to them later and be like, I found like a different direction, say I'm like the nicest way possible, yeah. but just in case they do offer you a job at the end of the internship and you realize that's not what you want. There are also some internships sort of set up for you to get a job after. My cousin worked in one um, over the summer, she's in law school, um, where at the end they either offered you a job or they didn't. So I think as you get into sort of more graduate school, specifically legal, you're might end up having those situations where they're setting you up to, if you want to, after you finish your degree, um, end up working for the company. Uh, I, I used to work in a law office too, and we had a lot of people come in as sort of law, legal law clerks, and um, they weren't necessarily looking to work for that law office, but we did have um, one attorney who had been working there since she was, she, I think she started as a legal assistant, then moved on to a clerk, legal and then went through law school and ended up working there she might still be there i don't know i don't check it out then <laughs> i think though you bring up something of like the interesting kind of like predicate to this question is like what kind of field are you looking at and like for like very specialized fields i feel like maybe this is a thing but i i think it's fair to say that like a lot of fields this doesn't even like exist like if you're doing like a, like a marketing internship or like for me it was like game design internships like anything like that like i feel like there's a very built-in thing of ironically like don't ask for this or like be very cautious when asking for such a thing because like those are very in demand and like not very specialized so i would say if you're if you're considering this like should you make it known from the outset it's like make do some research into that field and industry and like try to learn if like that's a faux pas because I can picture a couple places where like that's a faux pas yeah. for sure. You can also get a feel during like the interview how yeah. what the um what your boss is thinking like I know sometimes in interviews they'll be like well where do you see yourself after this internship like would you and sometimes they just straight ask you would you be ever interested right it's not like a bad thing to say like I would be interested that's not committing to a job there yeah. at the end but just know that they might ask you that in the interview yeah, yeah. Also feel like read the room. Um, I had several internships in college and uh, none of them were ever gonna pan out into full-time jobs. One of them it was an independent publisher and the team was me and my boss. Like that was it. Um, and then I also worked for a nonprofit in Vermont that was the League of Vermont Writers. They did not have anyone actually like 
working for them. Like anyone who was on the board was, or not on the board, but who, who worked for the league was like had a, a separate job. So I knew for a fact I wasn't gonna get hired full time there. Uh, so if it's something like that, where it's still a really good um, learning experience, and especially in, no, I'm not gonna say especially in nonprofits because the Green Trail is a nonprofit. Um, but just, just sort of read the room, try to figure out based on what the company is, what the internship entails, whether that's gonna end up being a thing or not. Yeah, unfortunately there's a lot of companies where they're hiring interns for a reason. It's because they can't afford to have a full-time person, so they do band-aids of interns. That's great. So, uh, for our second question, uh, Color Couture writes in from Instagram, how do internships benefit you? Um, there are definitely a lot of ways to answer this question. Um, I'm totally interested to hear what you guys say. I'll say the one that I think I hear less often, which is they help you find what you don't want to do. I, I did internships at certain companies where I was like, I'm glad I learned a lot from this, but if I did this for like a full-time paying job, like, this would not work out. So. Ironically for me, a huge part of my internship experience was looking at my experiences there and saying, no, I'm good. This is good. This like summer, three months, like great, all done. But what do you guys think? I actually had a somewhat similar experience. Um, while doing the internship, I loved it. I had um, an internship at the U.S. Embassy in Madrid um, and I loved it and it was great. Um, and then after that, I thought that's what I wanted to do was study international relations really? and work. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great at that. <laughs> um, but after thinking about it for maybe a year <laughs> or more later, I realized, um, I started thinking about some of the, as the negative aspects that people had mentioned while I was working there. In that, for example, you don't get to choose where you live. You move around every three years or two years. So, and some of them had explained about how lonely it might be. And after a while, I just realized that actually those are things that are kind of important to me. And I'm not so sure that I want to follow through on that career. It's really good that you thought about that, <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. I realized that before you invested too much. In yeah. Um, for my intern, my first internship, um, I was with a nonprofit. And me and one other girl, we were just doing public relations, media stuff but mainly just social media. Um, they were a very small nonprofit in Rhode Island and they didn't really have any guidance at all. We, you know, reported to one lady when we got there, but she was in charge of the whole nonprofit. So like she managed to spend maybe a minute talking to us when we first got there, but then it was kind of just like, okay, can you go like post on social media? And, you know, this being my first internship, I'm like, okay, like I can post on my own social media, but it's completely different posting for a nonprofit or a business. So there was no guidance there at all. And I think that benefit benefited me because I realized, you know, looking into internships, while I loved working for a nonprofit and I love the company, you have to look into it a little bit more before you even accept the internship, just to make sure it's gonna, you know, give you the skills that you are going to need to get that experience to go a little bit further the next time. Um, I don't think I got too many skills out of this besides being able to, you know, work independently. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just feel like that is what that internship helped me do. It's just like show me that I need to look more into it, look more into the internships before yeah. I yeah. apply to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure, it's like those things of like, the things you don't think about like whenever you're applying for jobs or like when you're younger and you're like learning about them, you're like, oh, like I should be looking at like the, the pay or the skills I'll learn, like you wanna look at those. But I think kind of to your point, it's also other stuff like what is like the organizational structure and yeah. like, do I actually wanna do this? Like, I think those are I think they're helpful. like, you're so excited that someone accepts you. <laughs> yeah, please, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I got yeah, an internship, please. that's so shocking. Or even when you get a job, like, like don't always feel like you have to take the job the first job that accepts you because you might want to look into that more. And same with um, like unpaid internships, just to something to keep in mind, I guess, is, you know, are you sure you're willing to like yeah. do all this like grunt work maybe? Because um, you do want to make sure it benefits yeah. you. Right. right. Yeah. The way that you sure. need it. So I feel like with unpaid internships, they're legally supposed to be 
supposed to be cracking down on them because um, you're, you're working. Mm -hmm. um, so you're supposed to either get it for college credit or they're supposed to pay you. Um, I did an internship where I wasn't paid. Um, I said that I would help out and they were like, we can't pay you. And I was like, I still want the experience of that. And they said, great. And then they found me two internships that were paid mm -hmm. um, because they wanted to help me out. But they, they were like, we can't pay you. This is necessarily legal. And I was like, I'll just volunteer mm -hmm. to edit and stuff like that. Um, so maybe, yeah, definitely look into that kind of stuff. Like, are, it, how is this benefiting you? And is it the benefit you want? I, my junior year of college, whoa, whoa to me. <laughs> I had several internship offers. And one of them, they said, we need an intern to work for free to edit our book. And at that point, I had already edited a book for free to get exposure. Yeah. Exposure pays all the bills. Um, to, for exposure, and I got I worked on one other book as an editor to to get paid, and I said I don't really want to do this for free anymore. Like yeah. that's I won't get any additional benefits from this. I would much rather work continue to work for the League of Vermont Writers. They said they would pay me, and I would get class credit for it. So I might as well just stick with them. I get to do some editing stuff. Um, I already know the structure of my internship, and it, I, I had to do some event planning while I was there. So. It gave me more skills that I got to work on. Um, so Quick show of hands, though, like, had to have all of us done unpaid internships? Because I only did unpaid internships. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like, maybe that'll change in the future, but, like, it's I, supposed to be. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be is the key word. Yeah. So, like, it, it gets interesting with, like, the college credit stuff, too, is yeah. something I would say you should pay attention to, because sometimes, and I fell into this, you'll be in the really weird position of paying to do your internship because it's a class technically <laughs> so like my second summer internship cost me like five thousand dollars and I was like wait a minute like <laughs> I, hmm, like the calculus there is a little like tricky like yeah. it's already such a function of privilege to be able to take an unpaid internship but yeah. then if you're taking an unpaid internship that counts as class credit like really think about that that yeah. value add like is it actually there or is this a weird situation where you're paying to do labor for a company but getting credit from your organization yeah. like and one thing that i was able to do and which might be an option at other schools too is i was able to apply for like a, a little like scholarship to do mm -hmm. my specific yep. internship totally. so that helped cover some of the costs of yeah, some schools do do grants or stipends, right. grants for stipends yeah. Um, yeah. for students if you can't afford it. Yeah, the state um, of Massachusetts has one, just a whole state for anybody to take an internship. Go Massachusetts. <laughs> <Classic>. Russian. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We all kind of like immediately zoomed in on the financial part of it, but it's, like, I mean, are there other benefits? <laughs> like, honestly, I think one of the benefits for me was I have always, always wanted to be one of those people that's like, oh, back in the day, I used to do X, I used to do Y, I used to do that, I used to do that, and um, like, you just have a whole bunch of experiences. And for me, interning was a great way to do that because I got to work for an independent publisher. I got mm -hmm. to work for. Uh, my college publisher, I got to work for the League of Vermont Writers, I got to do a whole bunch of other things, I got to edit, like I said, edit a book uh, before I graduated, and I just wanted all of these dis different experiences, um, and so that's one of the things I really liked about internships, is that they have an end, there is a chance, there's like an expiration date on them, and even if you do end up getting a job from one of them, like we discussed in the last question, that internship will end, and you'll get the chance to go into another one and have a different experience. Something I noticed when I was actually applying for jobs a year ago, almost a year now, I've been here for almost a year, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that it's so competitive out there nowadays that I would be interviewing for jobs, and I had two internships, but there were people who had graduated the same time I did who had like six internships. Yeah. And those people, you know, they would do it during the school year, during the summer, they started like a sophomore year of college, some even started in high school. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's very competitive out there, not to scare anyone, um, but like internships, like experience, that's what everyone's looking for right now. Um, I know a lot of entry level jobs that I was 
looking to apply to for like you need one to two years of experience in internships. Yeah, and then a whole like, other whole podcast. Different yes. problems. Next one. From <laughs> so say what? How internships benefit you? Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. fair. I have that a, a, a friend who yeah. went to EU, EU, um, NYU, and we had. <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> Sorry. It's not it's <laughs> um, So she went to NYU, at, which is a bigger name school that I went to, and she was talking to me and she goes, it's so stressful. We need like four internships to get a job after we graduate. And I'm like, yeah, that's a Woof. problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of a, my third internship, but cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally a problem getting internships. Um, so that's, honestly, it's it's a benefit in that way because, like I said, NYU is a big, is a big name school, but she was still struggling to find positions that she liked after college because she didn't have internship experience. And that's nothing against NYU. I think she just didn't seek out the opportunities because I'm sure NYU has a great program for internships. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they publicize that. I'm pretty sure it's like a thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they benefit you, but the thing is that you have to take advantage of those benefits. So if you're right. struggling to get intern an internship, that's what your career services is for. If you're in high school, there are programs for interns. I am a prime example for that, for interns in um, that you can do locally. Um, most major cities in the U.S. have internship programs. I know New York does, Boston does, Chicago does, um, LA, Seattle. If you go to the city website and you start looking for like high school internships, there might may be a youth program, very likely be a youth program where you get an internship in the summer. Also local companies, Microsoft does one for um, Washington State students. Um, I know Bank of America does one that's national. Like if you go to your local Bank of America location, they might be able to set you up with an internship. Uh, I did my internship through Boston, and then the next year they switched over to John Hancock had John Hancock Financial, not the guy. <laughs> John Hancock Financial had a um, a scholarship program uh, called ML MLK Youth Scholars. So it was you had to go to your internship four days for the week, and then one day a week you had to go to this um, seminar essentially where you would talk about um, different topics and it was all using Martin Luther King Jr. as sort of this basis and learning from his speeches, from his values. Um, it was a really interesting program, so look for things like that in companies near, that are located near you um, because the benefit is also saying, oh yeah, I worked through John Hancock, which is right, that's another a pretty name. big yeah. name, yeah. not just on the declaration. <laughs> Is it in the mall cell on the Fenway Park? It is. It's yeah, in the background. All lit up. Big deal. It's, it's a big deal. I mean, it's also like they, they're not just in Boston, too, which is cool. And like if you if you have the option to do these internships locally through these companies, it's it, the benefit to you is that you start getting job experience when you're in high school, uh, which is cool. Yeah, the one last benefit I can kind of think of that I definitely wanted to hit on was um, like possible mentors. Yeah. Like from my first internship, uh, I met the head of marketing at Fable Lucian. Hi, Sarah. Um, she's, <laughs> she's just like amazing. Definitely and she's launches. been I'm definitely just... launches. Um, <laughs> and, but she's been like my mentor f since I did that. And that was in my sophomore year of college. And I'm like a year and a half, two years out of college now. So she helped, she has helped me get yeah, like every professional opportunity I've gotten since then because she was just like super awesome as a mentor. So there is a possibility of any internship you're at, like if you bring your A game and you like work with somebody, there's a possibility of that becoming like a huge benefit to you later. And a great reference. And yeah, yeah, exactly, like a reference, a mentor, a friend, like all that came from like working at that internship for sure. So it's kind of the classic, like you get as much out as you put in, if you can, for sure. It's also a fun, just this came to me, um, as a student being treated as an equal by adults, for me that was great, especially in high school. I was working with people who were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and they didn't talk down to me because of my age. They treated me like an equal. They, they acknowledged that we were all doing the same job, which is just so refreshing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys had a similar experience, but I also, even in college, people I feel like would talk down to me because I was a youth. And they were like, you don't have experience, you don't have this, you don't have that. And I'm like, but 
we're working at the same place. Maybe treat me equally. And it's just refreshing to have that happen. I think you're the only intern who has ever done that. <laughs> that they were treating equally? Yeah. Oh, I remember at one point. Notice the silence of the sun. <laughs> uh, I remember at one point when I was like, working for the league, I went to my boss and she's like, oh, I'm just so tired. I said, Do you want me to get you coffee? And she goes, No, I'm not going to make you do that as an intern. You're not going to no. have coffee. And I was like, eh, But that's not in my job description. <laughs> You're just being nice. <laughs> And on the flip side of that, like, while it's nice to get, like, a taste of the real world yeah. and, like, working and stuff, it's also, if you're doing it while you're in college and everything, you still have, like, a little safety blanket of, yeah. just go right back yeah. into college. Yeah. Like, That's okay, nice. sure. I got a taste. No, not fully ready, but you know what it's kind of going to be like. Yeah. yeah. So our third question is, um, should I get an internship in the summer or during the school year? Um, so I'm going to give an answer that probably people don't like, but it depends. <laughs> um, I love that answer. That's, that's, the, that's the perfect answer. answer. The platonic <laughs> ideal for an answer on the podcast. Yeah. So I guess things to think about maybe are um, how busy you are. What does your schedule look like? Do you have time? during the school year to be studying, taking classes, and doing an internship. That's one thing you might want to think about because the summer, obviously you have a lot more free time, hopefully, um, and you can fully dedicate yourself to that internship. It also might depend on the kind of internship. Maybe not every area has internships during the school year. Um, maybe they're not well suited to doing during the school year because uh, you, I don't know, the internship is in the city and your campus is not in the city and you'd have to commute and just a lot of things to think about, I guess. Fair point. I kind of got lucky, whereas my major required us to get an internship, so that was like one of the blocks I needed to fill. So my internship like took up a time where I would be having a class instead. I also didn't have classes on Mondays or Fridays. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> Perfect. So, I had a lot of time. So lucky. Uh, so if you can manipulate your schedule a little bit if you're in college, that's always helpful. It but, can still be stressful. I didn't have classes my junior, my spring semester junior, I didn't have classes Mondays or Wednesdays. I had an internship, but I had four classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I cried a lot. <laughs> but yeah, remember that those Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Friday, like that's meant for homework. <laughs> I forgot that for a little bit at first. I was like, oh my gosh, I have Monday, Fridays off. Like I have a five, four day weekend. I can't count. Um, and then I realized, I'm like, when am I gonna do my homework? Oh yeah, on those Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna like deviate though and actually say I would be so bold as that you really should try to avoid take them during the academic year mm -hmm. like unless your school has like an infrastructure built in like you have to or it's like a co-op or something like I would try to avoid it I did all mine during the summer because otherwise there's like the summer slump and you just get like real lazy or uh, something like that but also because I always found the summer was a good time where I could balance it also with like part-time work which mm -hmm. goes back to like our first and second questions of like making it work financially I guess like the fact that I could go to my internship three days a week and then work three days a week was like what I had to do to make the internship kind of like work out in the books so I think that's like also totally valid and the other thing I would say too is like it, it depends of like <laughs> what company you're looking for like a lot of smaller companies maybe they have interns all the time but if you're gunning for one of these like major internships or Frankly, like my perspective is like anything in like the technical arts or creative arts, like mm -mm, like those only exist in the summer because they have giant internship programs that are managed by tens of people. And it's like, nope, we take a uh, hundred interns during the summer only. It's the only time it's gonna happen. Um, and so yeah, if you try to do it during like the fall or like for your like program, right? Yeah. If you try to say like, oh, we'll do it during the fall instead, like you, sometimes it's slim pickings for sure. Yeah. Think ahead though. Yeah. If you're doing it in the summer, like start thinking about it like yeah. a while. Yeah, like in yeah. the fall. Yeah. Like start yeah. applying. You need in the to fall. start applying by January or February. Yeah. Um, for sure. There are is. there are places like posting for summer interns right now. I can um, say from experience. 
Try applying in May. You are not trying to turn to <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you need, no. you need to get that locked in by like April. Yeah. Um, I remember one year I, so I worked on the freedom trail throughout college during the summer and it was the summer before I went to Ireland, I needed to save up as much money as possible. And I had three jobs. One of those was an internship and I thought it was gonna take up more time than it did. So I told them that I wasn't gonna be around that much and I ended up being around a lot. <laughs> like a lot, no, I- Too much. No, that was, sorry, that was my junior year. My junior year, I'd been applying to internships out of state and I was like, I don't know how much I'm gonna be around. I remember because there was I, I picked up a lot of tours, but this other kid who was a year older than me graduated and couldn't do a bunch of tours because he was sticking around for senior week. And no one was happy about that <laughs> except him. But I was like, works for me. I get to pick up extra work, and I had um, I was working for the League of Vermont Writers that summer, but I was doing a remote internship, which was cool. Uh, so as long as I got my work done, I got my money for the week. And as long as I, I did what my boss wanted me to do, it was all good. It was Gucci. That's interesting we haven't brought up much. Is like, did anybody do internships out of state, like out of where they lived? I guess or far away. Well, yeah, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> right. You were, you were, you were, so, what was that, so what was that like in terms of like, you know, going you know, all the way to Madrid for your internship? Um, well, I was terrified, actually. And the whole month before, I felt sick <laughs> because I was so afraid that I was going to go really far away and be all by myself in Spain. Um, and I knew Spanish, but I mean, Spanish in class is not the same as Spanish in the country. So um, I was terrified, but it was actually really great. Like, I, and I knew that I, I needed to like, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I knew that it was going to be like a great experience. I just Did you have to speak to Spanish the whole internship? Uh, no, well, I mean, like the other people working there also spoke English, okay, yeah. so it wasn't that bad. Um, I did have to occasionally speak to like the people getting visas in Spanish, and that was terrifying. I think it was like my second day. They put me in the window and they're like, "Okay, take people's fingerprints." <laughs> sure, <laughs> but they were just as scared as me, so it all worked oh. out. <laughs> and you mentioned that was through a government institution, right? You were saying that was an embassy? Yeah, the U.S. Yeah, so because that was one thing I, I was going to bring up too is like if you are attempting to do an international or even like an out of state one, like during the school year, <laughs> like don't, <laughs> but um, yeah. especially like there are. There are internships internationally. I like did not have any luck with them because you need to get like sponsored and somebody has to like, pay your thing. So like even less than like the summer versus the school year, just like be realistic about an international ones and less right through like your own government just in a different place for sure. You can also get stuff through um, the school. Champlain has a campus over in Dublin and one in Montreal and they have internship classes that you can take where they find you an internship you they help you get all the visas and all that and um you end up doing an internship during the school year through that internationally which is that's fancy yeah, that's cool that's a really cool thing yeah. i think um i don't know if it was required but all the elementary ed students um, who went on my semester had internships in classrooms so they got an international classroom experience so if your school has that option take advantage of it do it that's just do cool. it don't even think twice do it I went to London for a semester and I didn't do an internship while I was over there, but my roommate who went to the same school in the States as me came over to London. She had an internship in London. And like London, a little easier to get an internship in. They speak English. It's pretty much the same kind yeah. of um, setup. But um, so she said it wasn't like a huge transition that way. That way. Um, you know, they did the job the same way she was interning back at home. But, you know, it's just like a great thing that she could put on her resume like yeah. even though she was doing it wasn't like that harder much harder it like definitely boosted up her resume because she got an internship in a foreign country it's like cool. the disney effect what the disney effect so if you <laughs> if you put disney on your resume um, you're not guaranteed an interview but it's 100 percent gonna come up in an interview because everyone wants to know what was it like Mm -hmm. Also, they do the Disney College program, which you can do during the summer, 
or during the year and you can get college experience, like they do classes mm -hmm. as well as internship experience. So um, some schools will partner with them, Champlain did, and my roommate actually ended up doing that. So if you have that option, also look into that because the Putting Disney on your resume will definitely give it the Disney effect. <laughs> <laughs> that said, you know the pre-Disney effect, which is if you're applying to a job, an internship at Disney, they have a drop-down menu of yeah. what colleges like you you need to be from, and if you click other, it, the computer throws your resume in a bin, and you you'll never hear from them. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so there's literally like a list of like 30 colleges near like the Disney campuses for this is more for like Pixar yeah. or like anything like that, but like. If you're not on those lists, like the cold hard truth is like, nah, don't bother. You're done. Very competitive. Maybe don't put all your eggs in that basket. Yeah. <laughs> don't, right, put, right. don't put all your eggs in any basket. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to something huge yeah. like Disney or you mentioned Microsoft earlier or any big national big, company, yeah. look for a couple of local ones as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, just because that, in general, like it, that kind of thing is a really good experience. Um, but you can also get really good experiences other places. Yeah, for sure. Going back to the question about summer or fall, um, I don't know if you guys had like what well, your internship was like a full time job, pretty much like nine to five. But my internships were maybe like three or four hours. So I think that also oh. makes a big impact of like you know if you can do it in the fall or the summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because if it is only like three hours, yeah. okay. not like too much of a commitment. Is it three or four hours every day? No, I had a three days a week. Really? Okay, because I had three days, three days a week full time though. So like, oh, okay. Five, three days a week. Yeah, because I, I know like I've heard both. Like, yeah. It would be yeah. full time, but some people also have what I have where it was just a few hours. Well, how long was your commute to it? Like was Ten it nearby? Minutes. Okay, <laughs> see that must be part of it because I was yeah. commuting like into the city. So I think part oh, okay. of that was like that employer was cool. They yeah. were like, well, yeah. if you're going to come all the way here. Mm -hmm. And they'll make that like clear too. And yeah. they yeah. like what they expect. But yeah. It's curious to see what you guys have. I had a mix between all of them. So with the Freedom Trail, that was four days a week. I had actually technically five days a week. Uh, we had to be in. Um, but the fifth day, they would send us to different sites on the Freedom Trail for free to go into museums and learn more stuff. Because hmm. um, we were high school kids. They weren't going to make us work the full time. That was also a paid internship. Like We got money for all three summers. Um, but yeah, so we, um, that was like, not nine to five, but nine to four, I think. Yeah. I like think what we've four. learned is Kara is an internship unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we had to do, um, when I worked for the league, that was entirely remote. Like they would send me stuff that needed to be edited or they would say, we have this event coming up here, the things we need to do, or I ran their Twitter for a bit, so like we need to tweet. That was it. <laughs> that was my internship. Would they just contact you randomly when they needed you? Like there they was would, no I would get an email of like, here are things that I needed to get done. They didn't know how to use Twitter, so I was I was the tweeter. It can be difficult. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was before Instagram was huge, so we like didn't even have that. But it was, I was also supposed to live tweet for events that we were at too. So it was as long as I got my job things done, I my internship was good. Our last question is, what are internships really like? That is a very good question. And they are very different for every internship. Not, I don't think one internship is exactly the same. Um, I think it's, you know, with my internship, I went in every day and I sat at a table with one other intern and we just did like research on competitors and we did their social media. Occasionally we would go down and we would talk to the people that were, they had a thrift store downstairs, so we'd go down there and interact with people, try to get like quotes from some of the people in there, being like, how do you like this store? But other than that, it was like the same thing every day, which is why my internship was an okay experience. Um, I think the kind of internships where it's like different every day, they're always throwing new things at you, it's like that's the best learning experience, at least for me, I think that's how I learn best. It's just like seeing what all the different parts are for the job at once. Speaking, I like being chaotic <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. You can tell that just from your demeanor. Can you? You're very chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. But yeah, I know some jobs like, like mine is more research based, so yeah. it's just being on a computer, but some jobs they throw you right out there and they're like, okay, contact like these lists. 
Yeah. I'm focusing more on like public relations marketing because that's what I'm familiar yeah. with. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's very different for other fields, um, but like for marketing and public relations, like they will have you contact like medias right away. They'll be they'll be very open about giving you jobs and like giving a lot of responsibility and in internships, which is awesome. Yeah, it's interesting. Yours are kind of like they like slotted you into a job sort of thing. Like um, all the ones I did were like much more like structured. They were because they were for college credit. They were built around like kind of being like pseudo classes. So like, did you mean it? Uh, I, I did game design, oh. so I was in like communication Very essentially. Much Nailed it. Um, <laughs> so all of my internships were more built around like, all right, like today, like you're gonna do, like you'll have like a base level amount of work to do, but then it was peppered in with like, you'll meet this person, like learn about what they do. So like some companies do like really structure and build like a whole internship program of like trying to teach you stuff and like get you interested. So it really depends for sure on what company and how much of a program they have versus hey, we have some stuff that needs to get done and there's no one else to do it. Yeah. That's you. Like. Also, if that ends up being it, and there's the stereotype of interns get coffee and make copies. If that's what your internship is, leave. <laughs> just straight up. Damn. Leave. Especially if it's unpaid. Leave if yeah. you're unpaid, especially if you're just getting coffee and making copies. That's leave awful. and report them to whatever higher power you can. Because that's not how internships are supposed to be. They're supposed to be a learning experience for you. To that's what people jobs. think I do now. I'm a marketing assistant. That's what people do. People like, yeah. oh, so you make copies. I'm like, I'm sorry. Is I don't even 19... know how to use the copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it 1991? <laughs> to be like... fair, when I was a legal assistant, 90% of what I did was making copies, sending faxes. Well, that makes sense. I did not have to get coffee from my boss, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone that had to go out and get coffee no. from their boss. No. That's, Thank God. <laughs> that's a, a myth from my experience. If it's not your experience. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I'm sure it's yeah. somewhere. And at that point, report them to whatever higher power you can. Because that is, <laughs> yeah. it is no one's job to get coffee. Maybe a PA, un, like a personal assistant, right. under the right circumstances where that is in the job description for a barista. But <laughs> <laughs> if it's not in your job description, don't. Yeah. Just be like, uh, what am I? What information am I gaining for this? Oh, we're going or try to twist it. Like, oh, we're going for coffee to discuss this position. Great! I'm so excited. <laughs> you yeah. just kind of throw them off there. Yeah. In general, if anyone ever says the phrase like, "Oh, you're here to like pay your dues," like I would be very cautious of that. Like, of like, I don't know, what does that actually really mean? Yeah. And, like, is that falling into that like trap of stereotype? Um, I think it all comes in like the interview for the yeah. internship. So you yeah. should definitely have an interview for it. You can like tell so much from that interview while like you may be nervous, you may think they're the yeah. ones that are like, you know, evaluating you, you're doing the same thing to yeah. them, trying to figure yeah. out like what they're gonna do, how they're gonna help you. You know, is it gonna be like more of a hands-on, like you're gonna be with me, walk me through things, or are you just gonna like throw me at things and expect me to know how to do something? Yeah. Which goes well. back to like, don't just accept the first yeah. opportunity that comes by, you know, make sure you, that's the right yeah. Especially if it's your first internship and they don't like offer you any guidance going in, like you don't really know. Like you've been to classes, yeah. you've read the books, but you've never done this work in person. Like they should. And in general, talk to more guidance. work is different from every situation. Like every every job is different. Every company runs things differently. Even if even if it's the same exact thing. So you run our social media, but that could be. I mean, that's an entirely different um, can of worms on the opposite side of the company who would be if you if you're doing party regardless oh they're trying to get me to flop so i do college express and social media and they try to get me to do kind of let's do and it's like a completely different voice exactly <laughs> and that's so that's you know if you're if your first internship is at a non-profit and then your second internship is at a corporate company corporate company um is more corporate related then that's completely different situation so regardless of whether you've had an internship before they should still have some sort of training for you Definitely. Yeah, I think asking that question of like, what do you guys see your interns doing or like, yeah. what is this going to look like? Um, oh, I even remember what I was going to say too is uh, <laughs> using LinkedIn. This is like one of the only times LinkedIn is useful, but like it is, is finding people who have been interns at yeah. those companies or like alumni in your school yeah. who have done something similar like asking, reaching out to them and asking like, hey, like, is this internship worth it? What did you get out of this sort of thing? Like, 
I've been like I've had people reach out to me about my past internships and it's been really nice to be able to say to them like this one was super worth it like talk to this person and like try to get this kind of experience or like steer them away from it and literally be like hi like I don't think it was worth your time like this is only yeah. one time LinkedIn is like yeah. absolutely helpful. after talking to that person you could like yeah. if you they worked at the company that you want to get an internship at and you had a good conversation, you could use that That's as a connection yeah. to get in there. Yeah. yeah, you now know that person because you bonded over that yeah. internship. Yeah, for sure. Also, Glassdoor is great because they allow you yes. to put up reviews. Yeah. For sure. Um, and those can be anonymous reviews. So then you get a gauge for different companies um, and see, number one, even if they pay their interns because their interns might put up their salary. <laughs> sure. Going back to that, number two, um, you get to see not just an intern's perspective, but a whole office perspective. So if it has, I think they do five star ratings on Glassdoor. Uh, if it has like a two star rating, mm -hmm. why? Is it because <laughs> one- What do they do? Yeah, it, it, but yeah. also look at the number of reviews too. So like take it with a grain of salt like you do with any sort of review company. So if you look at Yelp and there's one, it, it's two stars because one disgruntled customer gave it a two star review and that's the only review. So like look at the issues at hand. Do they say that you're they're overworked? Does one person say they're overworked or does the entire company say that they're overworked? What do they talk about the work life balance and all these different things? So look at reviews on Glassdoor. I think Indeed also um, has reviews too. Mm. Yeah, and that goes all the way to like when you start looking for your first jobs, like I've always thought that it's better to find a company you're interested in than a position. So like I know internships are a little tricky because it's just blank intern, but like definitely like if you can find a company you're interested in, sometimes you can cold email somebody and like create an internship opportunity. Like that's a real far stretch, but like if you're really gunning for something and it's like a local company and they have a good glass door review, it's like sometimes you can cold email them and be like, hey, like I just want to do an internship and especially if that happens. Like you said with LinkedIn, if you find a school alumnus. Yeah. Email them on LinkedIn and say, hey, I noticed that you work for this company. I'm interested in working there. You can even just do an informal interview with them oh, and yeah. they might end up having you work for them, which would be great. A plus. Um, <laughs> extra credit. <laughs> extra credit for that. Yeah. They could even like talk to their boss and be like, hey, this girl, I've been talking to you. She mm -hmm. seems really talented. Can she be like my intern? And yeah. like, if it's an on, they could make it an unpaid, maybe paid. Yeah. position but like that's like pretty easy for companies to do and even if they have an opening that isn't posted yet so just constantly network um so that you get these connections and like i don't want to say pump those resources but like keep in touch with them <laughs> strategically <laughs> that's <laughs> like like tactfully keep them in, in mind keep, I keep guess. in contact Maybe. with them essentially like don't once you number one once you've gotten whatever you want to don't just abandon them don't yeah. ghost them yeah um like their posts on linkedin yeah, like send like a LinkedIn. yearly email being like hey i hope you're doing well yeah i am yeah. i'm friends with one of my bosses on facebook and she follows me on instagram and we like each other's photos and yeah. i never had you do that and she's like i remember she existed yeah cool i say if you message someone on like linkedin and they don't answer you maybe like a week or two later message them again but then cut yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah you're not <laughs> that's it yeah, yeah. no like yeah. hello are you there? Yeah. Yeah, don't be I see you <laughs> Creepy. Yeah. That never gets to again. Also, <laughs> if you're going to be interacting, I know I just mentioned social media with being friends with my old boss on, on Facebook and Instagram. Don't be aggressive with people on social media. So, <laughs> especially if. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I saw from your profile that you worked at a company I enjoyed. Would you DM me? Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. Just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like, especially social media, it's like a lot of people have public profiles on things like Instagram. But I find for me, the thing is that if I'm going to add them on any sort of social media, you want to have interacted with them in the past. Um, if you're follow, like following companies, obviously you want to follow them on social media. But like for me, I, I knew my boss in person. Like I spent the summer working three feet from her. So like interacting on social media isn't as weird. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it's somewhat less weird. It's somewhat less weird. Like I had a friend and it's not like go to interviews way. and she would look up who she's interviewing beforehand and then go on social media and like friend request them so that I she's like it gives me an in for my One interview. Step too but far. don't friend request it's creepy. them. Yeah. But do research them. Yeah. Right. You can research, yeah, but don't hit that. Yeah, because it is. They're gonna know that you were. Here's the thing.
they all up in there. I mean, <laughs> they, they look at your social media stuff. Interviewing I for bet. this job. But imagine like, if they yeah. follow you before the interview. Yeah, like, no, that would be weird. Mm -hmm. be um, <laughs> I, yeah, for this position, I was doing something clear. Like, oh Claire yeah, Claire. you were on, no, she didn't, she didn't add me or follow me, but she was like, all right, you were on the dance team. And I was like, I never mentioned that in any of my interviews. <laughs> and I was like, oh, she looked at my social media because that's what people who are hiring do. Yeah. On a completely different note, speaking of social media, make sure it's professional. Like, keep it professional, keep things that you don't want your boss to see private, like, yeah. it'll quick Google search on yourself. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing that you don't want out there. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also fair to say that a lot of internships involve you running social media. So Most I guess of them at this be point. aware of that. Yeah, like if you are the kind of person who doesn't care for or like social media, like be very <laughs> careful about it. You'll still probably have to know what it is because um, yeah. boomers don't. <laughs> right. It's, it's like traditionally, like if the copy and copies thing was like work that senior people didn't want to do like social media is the new dad like it's, i don't like most senior people don't yeah. want to be doing that i don't think so. it's even that they don't want to be doing it it's that they don't know how to do it true and yeah, for that's the new you guys for us it's just second nature to us mm -hmm. we know how to post how to retweet this like i said when i worked for the league they were like we think we need to get on twitter how do we make an account hmm. and i was like oh i have a twitter i don't really use it but <laughs> Yes, I have to teach you how to use Twitter now. Yeah. Um, so it is that, funny to see because, you know, I run the social media and so I talked to my boss, Megan, and to her, like, Twitter is the best social media. And that's, like, what she uses. I don't use social media. I, <laughs> <laughs> you don't use social, social media, media at all. <laughs> I don't use Twitter. Yeah. Like, personally, uh, I don't even really use Facebook that much. I use it more. Uh, but it is funny to, like, see what they know what they don't know and like watch that progress because yeah. we do have like a lot of age ranges in this office so you can kind of see that yeah going up to like megan del sanjo <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah or a lot of people a lot of people at this company think twitter is the thing and um it's it's, it's a thing it's it is for Just sure it's, a the thing. Thing. it's not the thing though apparently tiktok's a thing now Tik tiktok is <laughs> One of the things. My little sister, she was 16, I guess she's not little. Rip Vine. I think TikTok every, is yeah. every person Vine. who is still watching the video totally just closed the tab. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still watching, we're sorry. We're old enough that TikTok is a thing we don't understand. I understand TikTok because it's Vine. Yeah. It's it's Vine without the six second thing. Yes, but I thought, <laughs> I thought it was karaoke. I thought it was karaoke. Not all of it. It started as karaoke. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. It's more than that. Okay. <laughs> like, my sister only has Instagram and TikTok. She doesn't even know what Twitter is. <laughs> I'm going to have to hire an intern to run my TikTok now. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I've learned. <laughs> today. If you, you need to apparently. <laughs> <laughs> now hiring. <laughs> we, 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 we need help. <laughs> show us how to TikTok. <laughs> so, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We don't understand this, but you tell us. <laughs> yeah. That is actually a, a lot of it, though. That is, though. Yeah. yeah, it's like you're, you'll learn a lot in your internship. The people you're working for will also learn a lot. That's why a lot of interns do social media is because their bosses like don't know how to. <laughs> I just remembered I helped the CEO of one of my internship companies buy like a Chromebook because he had no idea what it was and I was like that one he's like sick like that was like a really weird interaction for sure all right folks that's it thanks for joining us for this month's podcast from CX uh, we were glad that you joined us once again the schedule is that we will release videos the first week of every month Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, each a different question, Friday, the whole thing. If you enjoyed this video, like um, this video and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions that you would like us to address in the next podcast, put those down below because we're always happy to answer your questions. That is what this podcast is all about. So a uh, great thank you to Katie for joining us full time now and a special thank you to Ethan. Perhaps we'll see him in the future. And you guys have a great weekend. <laughs> no. <laughs>